Lillian was a delicate and tender girl, often referred to as her mom's daughter. In kindergarten, she would cry every morning when it was time for her mom to leave. In the evenings, her mom would tuck her into bed, telling a bedtime story. In the mornings, she would dress her and take her to kindergarten and later to school. Without her mother, Lillian simply couldn't imagine her life. Everything revolved around her. Lillian's mother was a young and beautiful woman who had lost her parents early in life due to an accident when she was 18. Lillian's mother, Helen, got married after completing a railroad college and worked as a station attendant. The days when Helen worked night shifts were the toughest for Lillian. Without her mother, Lillian would throw tantrums with her father, whom she didn't like, and constantly pestered her paternal grandmother with questions about her mother. With her mother, Lillian was the perfect child. She listened, respected, and tried to be just like Helen cherished her daughter with all her heart. Mummy, when I grow up, will I be like you? Seven-year-old Lillian would ask. You definitely will. Her mother would smile, stroking her daughter's blonde head. You'll be a beautiful blonde with blue eyes. I really want to be like you, the little girl would say. Helen and Angel lived harmoniously and peacefully, their love built on mutual respect. The passion had settled a bit over the seven years of living together, but the respect, attention, and tenderness remained. Helen and Angel tried to support each other in their daily tasks. Angel, however, still adhered to traditional gender roles, considering certain tasks exclusively feminine and beneath a man. Despite Helen's efforts to modernize Angel's views, it wasn't very successful. Nonetheless, their disagreements rarely led to scandals. They had learned to accept each other for who they were. Angel patiently waited for his wife to come home and feed him, without causing any fuss. Perhaps Lillian would have been closer to her father if he didn't believe that raising a girl was solely the mother's prerogative. If it were a boy, that would be different. I'd take him fishing, teach him to drive a car, do carpentry. But with a girl, how am I supposed to know what she needs? Angel would argue. It's the same as with any child, love and care, Helen would sigh. But Angel would just shrug, claiming he didn't know how to approach it. When you give birth to a son for me, then I will take care of raising him, he said. Look, his wife laughed, so that he doesn't turn out spoiled in the end. Angel and Helen wanted two children, but they weren't in a hurry with the second one yet. I feel tired today. I'll go to bed early, Helen said. She suddenly got up and her head started spinning. Probably the weather change, she said, lately. She had been getting tired quickly, and she always felt sleepy. Maybe I'm pregnant, she thought, but the test showed nothing. Summer came, and Helen spent all her time in the garden, taking care of rose bushes in addition to her work and daughter. She started going to bed earlier and took a course of vitamins, but in the mornings, she physically couldn't get up. It was necessary to go to the hospital, insisted her husband and mother-in-law. The woman was pale, ate little, became thin, and her temperature suddenly started rising for no apparent reason. One evening, her nose started bleeding, barely stopped. I have bad news for you, the elderly doctor said, leaning over the table and avoiding eye contact with the woman. You have leukemia. This can't be. Helen looked at the doctor in fear. What should I do? For starters, undergo a complete examination and then we'll decide on the treatment. The sooner you start, the better. Much time has already been wasted. Helen went to the hospital for examination. Lillian stayed with her father and grandmother. For the little girl, these weeks without her mother seemed like an eternity. Mommy, I'm so glad you're finally home. She hugged Helen when she returned. I missed you so much. I missed you too, dear. Her mother replied, tears in her eyes. She was even paler and looked exhausted. The skin on her emaciated face was almost translucent. Helen's condition did not improve. She spent more time lying down, trying to gather strength and do something at home. She no longer went to work. Lillian tried to be with her mother. Now they cooked meals together. Helen tried to teach her eight-year-old daughter everything. She carefully and imperceptibly prepared her for independent life. Sweetie, she often said, hugging her daughter, I love you very much and will always love you. Just know that, whatever happens, I'll be there. Even when I'm gone, I'll always be with you. Mommy, why are you saying such things? We'll always be together. Lillian kissed her mother's thin, sunken cheeks. We'll always be together, the mother repeated, hiding her tears. 
the second therapy session did not bring relief to Helen. Instead, the woman returned in an even more shattered state. It was difficult for her to get up and move around the house. Angel didn't know how to help his wife, and watching her suffer drained him of strength. He, a grown and strong man, tried to be home less often, shamefully escaping at any opportunity. Particularly unsettling for him were the understanding, fear-filled, and hopeful eyes of his daughter. The girl tried to be with her mother every minute. The mother-in-law, witnessing Lillian's attempts to ease her mother's plight, could only wipe away tears. Who could help a child losing the most precious a mother? Stun warm, sunny spring days, Lillian and her mother would leave the house. They would sit in the gazebo in the yard and talk. Sometimes, Helen would tell her daughter about taking care of plants in the garden or her favorite flowers in the flower. Sometimes, it was just stories or funny tales from their past life. Now, that life seemed like an unreachable dream. Lillian attended school every other day. The teacher turned a blind eye to her irregular attendance, knowing what was happening in the girl's family. Especially since Lillian excelled in both homework and class assignments, she would tackle new topics herself, but always sitting next to Helen. She felt, though she wouldn't admit it even to herself, that this was the last spring they would spend together. Lillian simply couldn't afford to lose those precious hours. Kissing her mom, she would go to her room at night, already anticipating the morning. After Lillian left, Helen would take out paper and pen and write something for a long time. She would go to bed after midnight. Angel had long been asleep on the couch in the living room. Lillian remembered that day forever. In the morning, they made dumplings together, then walked in the garden. Helen sat on a blanket under a tree on the grass, while Lillian weaved a wreath from yellow flowers for her head. This yellow wreath brought life to her mother's pale face. It seemed to glow with warm, bright light from within. In the evening, they had dinner together with her father, laughing and enjoying themselves as they used to in their past life. Leaving for her room, Lillian, as usual, hugged and kissed her mom. Sweetheart, I will always be with you. I will always love and protect you, the woman whispered. Lillian nodded and wiped away an uninvited tear as she ran to her room. Helen wearily leaned back on the pillow. On this night, she didn't reach for pen and paper. Instead, she reminisced. Memories carried her back to those happy, carefree days when she was healthy and cherished every day. Helen fell asleep with a happy smile on her lips. Lillian abruptly jumped out of bed. She knew something had happened, something very bad. Hundreds of little hammers were pounding in her temples. Trouble. People crowded around her mother's room. Her grandmother, her father's mother, embraced the girl and wept. Let me go. Lillian screamed. Let me see my mom. She broke free from the old woman's grip and rushed into her mother's room. Her mother lay in bed with a gentle smile on her lips, just like yesterday when Lillian went to her room. However, her mother's beauty seemed frozen, and her skin was already cold. Lillian felt it when she hugged and kissed her, crying on her chest. Someone tried to pull her away, but a voice said, Don't touch her. She's in real grief. Let her cry. It will make her feel better. However, it didn't get any easier. The pain that engulfed the girl was so immense that it seemed endless. Lillian poorly remembered those days. Initially, they wanted to send her to a neighbor so that she wouldn't see everything that was happening in her house. However, the girl would silently resist, repeating only one phrase. Let me go to mom. The girl clearly understood that these were the last hours she could spend with her mother. She knew she wouldn't have another chance like this. After the funeral, Lillian changed significantly. The cheerful and lively girl she used to be turned into a pale shadow. She still went to school, took care of her things, and even her father's belongings, just like her mother taught. She prepared simple meals if her grandmother, who now divided her time between two homes, couldn't do it. However, the girl tried not to interact with anyone. Not even her grandmother, who tried to sympathize with her and help her, could find a way to connect. Lillian answered all questions briefly, avoiding talking about her feelings and experiences altogether. I don't know what to do with her, Angela shrugged. She's just fading away before our eyes. Give her time, Miranda. Helen's friend, who tried to comfort Lillian, said, Time heals everything. And do you want her to just forget her mother? She needs to go through this. Just don't pry into her soul. The mother and son exchanged glances. 
there was a grain of truth in the neighbor's words. Miranda, of course, was not a psychologist, but she had a lot of life experience, and they finally backed off from Lillian. Miranda visited Lillian a couple of times a week. The father tried to talk and consult with his daughter, but she remained closed off. Gradually, Lillian began to return to life in small steps. Her recovery began. Her mother played a crucial role in this. Lillian, this is for you. The father entered the girl's room. He was organizing documents and found a large cardboard f In it, his wife asked to give the folder to their daughter after her death. The man, of course, opened the folder. Inside were sealed envelopes with letters. He carefully put them back and handed them to his daughter. How could he not fulfill his wife's last wish? Lillian went through her mother's letters. There were eleven of them. Each envelope had a date or a note indicating when the girl was supposed to open it. Lillian cried bitterly. She missed her beloved mommy so much. Open this now, she read on envelope number one. With trembling hands, the girl opened the envelope. My dear little girl, Lillian read, and tears again dripped onto the sheet of paper filled with her mother's delicate handwriting. The girl pressed it to her face. It smelled like her mom. If you're reading this letter, then I'm no longer with you. But you remember what I told you. I'm always with you every second. I hug you, my little girl. It happened that we had to part, but you must be strong. It's hard to be weak in this life. You must live on for both of us. Water my favorite flowers, watch our favorite movies, admire the sunset, and welcome the sunrise. Do it for me and in my place. Don't... I love you and will always love you. Hug Dad for me. Be strong. With immense love, I kiss you a thousand... No, a hundred thousand times. Your... This letter became Lillian's talisman. She always carried it with her, and when things got really tough, she would read it over and over again. The pain would subside. Her mother's love saved her. Life continued its course. Angel struggled to connect with his daughter. They communicated, but only because they had to. Lillian still didn't confide in Grandma Lillian, but overall, they coexisted normally. By this time, Lillian turned ten. On her birthday, it was time to open the second letter from her mom. In it, the woman wrote about how time heals and life goes on. She wished her daughter to excel in studies and achieve her desired heights. Reading this message, Lillian suddenly realized that she wanted to become a doctor and fight against insidious diseases like leukemia that took her mom away. The letter included a card with wishes and a kiss from her mom. It left an imprint of her lips colored with her favorite pink lipstick. Lillian pressed the lip print to her cheek, and for a moment, it felt like her mom had kissed her. She placed the card on the table and stored the letter in the box where the first message was kept. The girl was afraid that if she carried it with her all the time, it would eventually wear out. Lillian noticed that their neighbor, Mrs. Joan, started visiting them frequently. She lived across the street, raising a daughter a year older than Lillian. Mrs. Joan was divorced. Initially, she brought them apple pie, trying to be neighborly. The next time, she asked Angel to fix her lock, which broke at the most inconvenient moment. There were many such occasions, and Lillian began to notice that her father and Mrs. Joan exchanged strange glances and blushed when she entered the room suddenly. One day, she overheard their conversation. Thirsty for water, she heard Mrs. Joan say to her father, Angel, Lillian is just a little girl. She needs a normal family, a regular family with a dad and a mom, then she can return to her old life. I don't know, Lillian loved her mom so much, the man replied. Her mother is gone. She will come to terms with it when she has a normal family again. We love each other and I can be a real mom to your daughter. Lillian wanted to scream that she would never come to terms with it and would never forget her mom. She didn't need any normal family or another mom. Instead, trying not to make any noise, she rushed to her room and cried bitterly. She didn't want this new normal family. Dad, I don't want Mrs. Joan to come to our house, Lillian told her father. And I don't want to live with her. She can never replace my mom. No one can. Where did you get that idea? The man asked. I never intended to live with her. I understand that a mother cannot be replaced. Lillian hoped that her father would listen to her. But Joan was a mature and intelligent woman. Besides, Angel missed the tenderness and attention of a woman, and she took advantage of it perfectly. 
After a couple of months, Angel finally brought Joan to his house and introduced her to his daughter as his wife. Now Mrs. Joan will live with us. She will try to replace your mother, he said, avoiding eye contact. No one can replace my mom, exclaimed the little girl, rushing out from behind the table. Angel wanted to go after her, but his new wife stopped him. She needs to get used to this idea. It's okay, she'll come to terms with it, the woman said. Little Lillian cried bitterly in her room, experiencing the betrayal of her loved one. See, with the stepmother's arrival, their lives in the peaceful house changed. Mrs. Joan brought her own rules. She loved organizing elaborate dinners for the whole family, where everyone had to gather at the table, engage in pleasant conversations, and smile. She tried to check how Lillian was doing her homework. However, the girl was an excellent student, and she only received gratitude from her teachers. Considering that Joan's own daughter was not doing well academically, this quickly bored her. Mrs. Joan tried to appear as a good mother to Lillian in front of Angel's mother. However, the grandmother was wary of the new bride, thinking that her son rushed into marriage without considering Lillian. At first, they wanted to place Joan's daughter, Martha, in the same room as Lillian, but she strongly opposed it. This is my room, and I won't share it with anyone, declared the girl. She had already taken her mother's photos and cherished trinkets. But Martha will be uncomfortable sleeping in the living room, and we don't have an extra bedroom, said the father, raising his hands. Then you sleep in the living room and let this girl take your bedroom, not mine, exclaimed Lillian. Don't be so smart, raised her voice, Joan. It's not up to you to decide who sleeps where. Be to whom, then? To you? Lillian looked at the woman with such hatred that she got scared, and the father realized he had gone too far and retreated. Martha was temporarily accommodated in the living room. The girls didn't get along. Martha tried to provoke her stepsister as much as possible, but in front of the parents, she was an angel. Lillian didn't hide her feelings towards her stepsister, for which she constantly received reproaches from her father and stepmother. Once, returning home from school earlier than usual, Lillian caught Martha rummaging through her things and examining letters in a box. What are you doing here? exclaimed the girl. I'm checking what you keep here, Martha replied, hiding one of the letters behind her back. What is this rubbish? Give it back. The girl rushed at Martha and tried to snatch the precious letter. Martha laughed and hid it behind her back. Well, take it back, she teased Lillian. At that moment, Angel entered the room in response to the girl's screams. He had just arrived for lunch. The man personally confirmed that his daughter's complaints about Martha mistreating her were true. What is happening here? He asked loudly. Martha threw a letter in Lillian's face. I was just joking, she said. What were you doing in Lillian's room? The man asked. Well, can't I enter her room? The girl replied with a question. In the evening, the father locked the door to his daughter's room. He ignored his wife's protest. She will only distance herself more, and we shouldn't separate the children, he stated. It's her room, a place where she can be alone and where her personal belongings are. Lillian is that kind of person. She needs her own space, he added. Look at the princess, Joan snorted, glancing at her offended daughter still sleeping in the living room. And how does Martha manage without personal space? Martha came to this house recently, while Lillian grew up here. So, your daughter will have to adapt and adjust, he said straightforwardly. Even though he didn't get along very well with his daughter, he respected her little personality. Lillian opened her next letter from her mother on her 11th birthday. My dear girl, her mother wrote, today you turned 11. It's your second birthday without me, but remember I am always with you. I love you and will love you forever. Perhaps your father has already brought another woman into our home. I hope she's good, and you two can get along. I understand that you will never love her like you love me, but if you become friends, I'll be happy. Life doesn't stand still, and with the support of those who love you, it's always easier. If you don't find common ground, don't be upset. You will grow up and leave the parental nest, and our dad won't be alone. Try not to quarrel with her. It will be calmer for all of you. I love you and kiss you 100,000 times. As a gift, Lillian found several dried dandelions from the wreath they made together on the last day for her mother. The girl was growing up, and her relationship with her stepmother remained tense. 
Martha naturally tried to promote her own daughter, but Lillian didn't care. She was still an excellent student, although no one was interested in her studies. The girl planned to attend medical school and also enjoyed dancing, spending her evenings in training sessions. She did everything to avoid encountering her relatives as much as possible. In dancing, she also achieved success, earning numerous awards and medals in competitions of various levels. Another reason for Martha and her mother to be envious. This year, Martha was hoping her husband would pay for her education at one of the capital's universities. However, the man insisted that he wouldn't pay for the contract for either of them. He was confident Lillian would get in, but Martha had no chance, even with three tutors. The girl was lazy and inattentive, relying solely on her beauty and the hope that her stepfather would eventually pay for her contract. Lillian no longer celebrated birthdays. She disliked the whole charade with people who didn't love her. She went to her grandmother's, and together they baked a cake, drank tea, and in the evening, the girl read another letter from her mother. Lillian stared at the letters. Each time, there were fewer of them. All the read messages were kept in a box that Lillian also locked just in case. In every letter, her mother spoke to her. It was as if she was right there with her daughter living. When Lillian fell in love, her mother told her in a letter on her 15th birthday about her first love, describing it as a beautiful feeling. However, she warned Lillian that often, at that age, people tend to idealize their chosen ones. Soon, Lillian realized the truth. Her beloved turned out to be ordinary, and the feelings quickly cooled. Her mother talked to her about friendship and betrayal, adult relationships, her responsibilities, and it always seemed timely, as if the woman could see what was happening with the girl at that moment. In this birthday letter, her mother congratulated her and reminded her of the importance of choosing a future profession, as it is a significant part of one's future life. She shared the story of how she met Lillian's father at the age of 16 and fell in love with him for a lifetime. He later went to the army, and she waited for him. When Angelo returned, he married Helen. Lillian read the letter and cried. She heard her beloved mother again, speaking to her. They were together once more. In this envelope, Helen left a special gift for her daughter, a golden chain given to her by Lillian's father on her 18th birthday. Martha failed her exams. There was no chance of getting into a state-funded university. Angelo refused to pay for her to attend the Capital University and suggested the option of enrolling in the Polytechnic Institute in a neighboring city, where the costs were much lower and living expenses would be significantly cheaper. Martha insisted on going to the Capital or nowhere. In the end, she had to go to college to avoid wasting a year. Martha was distressed, her mother was outraged, and with Lillian's golden medal on the horizon, she became the biggest irritant for them. The girls quarreled constantly, and not even Lillian's absence at home most of the time helped. One day, Lillian forgot the chain given by her mother in the bathroom, accidentally leaving it on a shelf. The next morning, she rushed back to find that the precious gift was nowhere to be seen. She knew Martha had been in the shower after her. Martha, Lillian looked at her stepsister with a plea. Please give me back my chain. What chain? Martha feigned surprise. I don't have it. How would I know where you throw your things? You have a lock on your door. It was on the shelf in the bathroom, and you went in after me, and it disappeared. I didn't take your chain. I have my own, Martha yelled. Lillian, this is too much. Joan's voice trembled with anger. You just accused my daughter of theft. Apologize right now. But she took it, Lillian almost cried. Apologize immediately, the woman shouted. I won't. Martha took the chain, Lillian insisted. Enough, her father shouted, banging his f She haven't seen who took the necklace. Maybe you lost it yourself. You can't just accuse someone like that. You're punished. You won't go to the dance competition said the father sternly. This is but dad. Lillian tried to say something, but her father stood up from the table, indicating that the conversation was over, and only Martha smirked cunningly. Lillian had to withdraw from the competition at the last moment. She let the team down, had a falling out with the leader. After that, she didn't go to dance classes for two more weeks until she finally explained the situation. The necklace was found entirely by accident, while throwing away garbage, Lillian saw it in the trash. What's this? She approached Martha. 
How should I know? Martha shrugged. You lost it yourself, and you're asking me. Digging in the trash? Why are you like this? Lillian asked her stepsister quietly. You know that it's all I have left of my mother. I'm not interested in that, mm -hmm. she replied indifferently. You're lucky you found that necklace at all. Lillian excelled in her exams, got into medical school on a scholarship. Joan tried to convince her husband that educating a girl in the capital is expensive and unfair to send one to a prestigious institute and the other to an ordinary college. But her father reminded her that Lillian got the scholarship herself, so he had to cover the dormitory and living expenses. He agreed with his daughter that he would transfer a certain amount to her card once a month. Lillian wasn't eager to go home often. With a light heart, she left for the capital, taking with her the most valuable letters from her mother and her gifts. She had no regrets leaving her father, stepmother, and stepsister behind. She was heading towards a new dream. After settling in the dormitory and getting to know her roommate, who turned out to be a pleasant girl and her future classmate, Lillian opened the second-to-last letter from her mom. It's sec. My dear daughter, I have no doubt that you got into the institute or university. You always studied well and were a very smart child. If so, know that you are halfway to your dream. Now the main thing is not to turn back, go only forward. Study hard, strive for your goals, and know I believe in you, always have, and always will. I love you and kiss you a hundred thousand times. I'm always with you, my dear, in every breath of the wind, in every drop of rain, in every ray of sunshine. A mother's love never dies. Lillian cried again. She felt like that little girl who used to weave a dandelion wreath for her mom. Lillian put the letter in the box. One more letter remained, it says. Before the wedding, Lillian smiled. Her mom tried to be with her as long as possible, especially when she missed her the most. The girl touched the necklace around her neck, smiled, and put the unopened letter in the box. She had no plans to get married yet. She was calm and knew that she had something that would always support and instill faith, her mother's love and letters. Thank you for being with me, everyone. Good mood, bright colors of life, until we meet again.